Hello, this is Bob from Snowman Marine. Today I'll be demonstrating how to remove a lower unit from an Evinrude or a Johnson outboard. The one I'm using is a 1987 140 horse V4. Now many of these lower units that look like this in the photos are similar in design and are removed in a similar manner. Some have an extra bolt, some have different fittings and larger bolts, but I'll be showing you all these differences as we go along, so we should be able to cover your outboard if it's a 1978 40 horse or up. We're going to begin at the power head. That's the engine on top of the outboard after you've removed the hood. This is what you see is the power head. Yours might look a little different than this 140, but it'll be much similar. And what we're trying to locate is in the first instance, the bolt that connects the shifter shaft rod that goes down to the lower unit to the shifter shaft. You may have to dig around through some fuel lines and some electrical, move it out of the way. I want you to look under the carburetors in the front of the engine. Underneath, at the bottom, you will see a little block that looks like this, and it has this bolt with a slot in it. And it might be on the port side and it might be on the starboard side. Different engines will have it in different locations. But that is what we're looking for and that is the bolt that we want to remove in order to disconnect the shifter shaft which you can see just below the block there from and free it from the uh, shifter lever. So the tools we're going to be using today to take this gear case off, first thing we're going to do is disconnect the uh, shifter. What I use here is a um, quarter inch drive wiggly socket. I call it a wiggly socket. You can call it whatever you want. I do tape it onto the uh, extension here. The reason I do that is so that it doesn't fall inside underneath the uh, engine. And I use a, uh, an extension here, it's probably about, I don't know, 9 or 10 inches. And then I like to use this uh, little handle here, which is an extension just with a handle on it. And then our uh, quarter inch ratchet drive here. So what we're going to do is we're going to reach in. Get our little wiggly socket on there. Now, for some engines, it's not going to be as easy to get in. This one's not too bad. You will have to shift your control lever from either reverse to forward to see uh, what access point is the best. Your control should look something like this in the boat. Moving the handle on the remote control in the boat to forward or reverse can help to position the shifter shaft bolt for better access. The idea here is just to get this screw loose, uh, keep sort of an inward pressure on the whole assembly, uh, your tool assembly, so that bolt is loose. And then take your socket off and leave the bolt sort of standing in there. The tool we're going to use next is a grabber tool. That's that end of it. This is uh, the other end of it. So you uh, can grab stuff that isn't magnetic with this. So we're just going to reach in there. We want to get a hold of it in a fashion that we can uh, keep the washer from falling. Pull it out of here. And there's your shifter bolt right there. So now the uh, shifter shaft is disconnected from the shifter arm. Okay, now for outboards that are not equipped with a bolt-on type shifter shaft connection, they have a, um, a different style. This is what it looks like under the power head. Likely you won't see this unless you take your covers off, but you want to locate your shift cable on the right-hand side when you're standing behind the outboard towards the front. You'll find your shift cable 
and you want to remove it from this lever and the circle indicates where the cable was removed from this lever on the outboard and this will be um, on the right hand side when you're standing from the back. Now you want to locate this pin and it's in this area when you're looking from behind it's in this area on the shaft, on the shifter shaft there. You want to remove the pin, get a hold of it, and pull it out. And this will free the shaft. Once you pull this pin out, it'll free the shaft to be pushed in. So you want to push in on this shaft, and as you're doing that, turn the lever forward towards the front of the outboard. And when you do that, you will disengage the shifter shaft from this shifting lever and it'll be free to go ahead after this to remove the bolts from the lower unit and remove the lower unit without the shifter shaft being connected. This is what the block looks like again underneath that you won't be able to see that's on the other end of this shaft so you push in on this shaft moving the lever forward and you will disengage the shifter shaft that's going down to the lower unit from this shifting lever. The next step is to disconnect the lower unit fasteners. I'm going to show you which tools I'm using for the 140 V8 that I'm working on. You will find though that tools will vary, uh, especially sizes of wrenches and sizes of sockets for the different outboards. I have a 9 16 combination wrench, a 9 16 ratchet wrench, I have a quarter inch drive ratchet with a 3 8 inch socket on it and I have a 3 8 drive ratchet with a 4 inch extension and a half inch shallow socket. First of all we need to lift the outboard to a height that will allow us to remove not only the lower unit but the drive shaft which extends up under the engine. So our next step here once we have the outboard lifted is to mark the trim tab position. The trim tab is the round item here that's held on with one bolt and has a fin on it. And typically if you're going to replace uh, this gear case with the same gear case, like you're going to repair it and then put it back on, you could look at the marks that may or may not, there may be numbers and marks on some models, and um, you could mark those numbers down and those marks or mark that uh, straight line straight across like I just did there in order to remember where the trim tab goes. Now in the event that you're replacing this gear case with a different gear case or a new gear case then of course that mark isn't going to help. So you'll want to make a mark that points where the trim tab position was in relation to the this center bolt here. That way when you have a replacement gear case you just align your mark with the uh, center bolt and your trim tab will be in the same position. So I'm going to start out with a quarter inch uh, drive ratchet and a 716 socket. We're going to remove this trim tab. After removing the trim tab, look underneath, as you can see in this photo, where there's another fastener underneath the trim tab. We're going to use the 3 8 inch ratchet here, with a short extension and a 9 16 inch socket to get at this bolt. Well, if you're working on something that's fresh water, like this, uh, this one, those aren't too bad. We're working on something that's salt water. That's a different video. However, the bolts come out, the procedures are the same. So we have um, two more bolts. This one here is actually pulling on the anode, so we can leave it alone.
do for now is just crack this bolt loose. And that's it, just a couple turns. We're going to leave it in there so we don't drop the gear case. Okay, we've moved around. This is the, uh, when you're standing behind the boat, this is the right hand side. Some people would call that starboard. Starboard. So I got a couple wrenches here. I've got a uh, 9 16 um, standard long wrench. And I've got a 9 16 wrench with a ratcheting head. I really like to use on these. So what we want to do is crack these four bolts loose to begin with. That's one. So that's two. Move the engine over to the other side. We'll do the port side. Standing behind the boat, be the left side. Yeah, crack all four of them loose. And I really like to use the gear wrench for this. Now, usually these bolts are a lot the same. They're stainless steel. Don't replace them with steel bolts. As you see, same bolts from the other side, stainless steel. Need to replace and replace them with the right bolts. Now we're in a position now where we can remove this large bolt. I would caution you at this point, if you haven't done this before, you probably want help. You want someone to hold the gear case. all the way out, not all the way out. We will add gear case to make it loose. Once the bolt is removed, the gear case or lower unit or leg or whatever you want to call it can fall. So use caution. If it's sticking, you may want to wiggle it in order for it to come loose and use a downward pulling motion and it should come down and just lower it past the outboard so you have the drive shaft and the shifter shaft. Once we've got this unit off, this is what you're going to see inside most of these units. You're going to see the hole where the shifter um, shaft goes up, the hole where the drive shaft goes up, and here's the exhaust housing. Now this one's staying in position, but they usually come out and they usually have rubbers on both ends of them that are glued. If they need to be replaced, replace them and get the proper glue for it. There's your exhaust system right there. You can see where all our bolts went in and if these threads need cleaned, you'll need to clean them. And This is our water water pump pipe, which is pretty important once we go to reinstall the gear case because if you don't get the water pump pipe back into the water pump, you're going to have some major problems. <laughs> 